Uh, so good afternoon. Um, I am going to uh, introduce um, who's behind me here and how we work in the St. Johns County Sheriff's Office is we want to get that clear, um, you know, factual and concise information out from the get-go. So uh, to my uh, right and your left is Director Skip Cole, who's with our Criminal Investigation Division. Right next to his left and my right is Captain Bill Worley with our Criminal Investigation Division. Uh, to my left is uh, Director Scott Beaver, who's over our Patrol Division. And then to his left uh, and your right is our Sergeant Jason Kroll, who actually, uh, this is his shift. Um, so this morning around 5.42 a.m., the St. Johns County Sheriff's Office was dispatched to a burglary in progress of a, a storage unit. This storage unit is up on Palm Valley Road, um, just uh, on this side of actually A1A proper. Our deputy sheriffs get there, they actually start working and clearing the facility. Uh, during the actually clearing of the facility, they actually discover that one of these suspects is still in there, and they engage that sp suspect and take that suspect into custody for the burglary of the, of the complex, of the storage unit. After or during the investigative part of that, they learn from that there's another accomplice, at least one suspect outstanding, that our deputy sheriffs basically go to lo work looking for in the immediate area. Our deputy sheriffs start looking for the additional suspects. Um, we had some canine tracks too as well that kind of led to some different uh, dead end areas per se. And then again, our other deputy sheriffs in the area of Palm Valley, Ponte Vedra, Nocatee area started looking for some additional suspects involved in these burglaries. Um, during that process, uh, one of our deputy sheriffs actually comes upon a vehicle, a suspicious vehicle that is similar to what the description that was given uh, on the property of the uh, storage facility in the area of the Palm Valley outdoors or under the Palm Valley Bridge, which is not too far from our location today. This deputy sheriff actually approaches the vehicle. The suspect uh, was in the driver's seat of the pickup that most of you have already filmed, um, and she makes contact with that individual. Uh, at first, he's being compliant, and then uh, he later, um, the, uh, some type of struggle ensues. We don't know yet until we download the body-worn cameras and the dashboard cameras from her car. Uh, with that being said, um, a, the, the vehicle takes off. Our deputy sheriff pursues the vehicle, heading towards Nocatee on Palm, Val Palm Valley Road over the Palm Valley Bridge. Additional deputy sheriffs, um, we definitely know based on her radio conversation, our deputy sheriff know that she was in some type of struggle and she's needing assistance immediately. Now the deputy sheriffs, uh, sheriffs uh, join the chase in marked patrol units, and the chase actually leads in the direction of uh, basically the road that goes into Ponte Vedra High School, and also too you can turn off that road into Davis Park, which is where a lot of our children here play in St. Johns County sports. As the vehicle actually enters down, heading towards uh, Ponte Vedra High School, uh, at the time we believe all three vehicles in the chase are re relevant within each other. The lead vehicle um, takes a, an evasive action to basically stop the pursuit, uh, and she attempts a pursuit. The vehicle actually spins and goes into a retention pond in front of um, some soccer fields where there was a very large amount of children and families actually um, playing soccer. The vehicle actually spins into this small retention pond. He continues to um, drive through the retention pond area and the vehicle becomes disabled. Um, our deputy sheriff's uh, original vehicle that actually um, tried to pit him or pitted him um, was disabled too as well. She jumps out of her vehicle. Um, she immediately takes foot pursuit to the individual. He jumps out of his vehicle, which is that pickup truck, and he's noticed um, he has a firearm in his hand. Um, he takes off running towards the soccer field where the children are playing. The other deputy sheriffs that are in the pursuit actually were in their cars still. He's running through the parking lot with a firearm. Um, our deputies, uh, he takes basically a defensive posture between two vehicles at the end of the parking lot and um, a shooting, in, we engaged the suspect at that time. The suspect at this time, we don't know his condition. He was life flighted off that, uh, uh, the pad there at the soccer field, and we do not know the condition, but as soon as we get that condition, we'll put it out to you. Here's the main key behind this is, we had a very large amount of children playing organized sports with their families. We had a reckless suspect with no caution at all for life people in the parking lot walking around. And our deputy sheriffs took the actions they had to to stop from having further injury and innocent people being killed. It breaks my heart when our deputy sheriff tell you today that as they're showing up for his backup, there's children prone out on the soccer field. Children on a soccer field because this man took actions to evade the police department instead of just stopping and turning himself in before killing innocent people. And our deputy sheriff said that today. I'm going to end with this, is that the community that we live in in St. John's County is a special place. They have been so resilient. They've been understanding as we closed down parks, we had thousands and thousands of kids in the Davis Park area 
kids at Ponte Vedra High School taking exams, practicing sports when this incident was going on in broad daylight. And our community was phenomenal in their response and their understanding. And I want to thank you too, the media, for being so respectful of our deputy sheriffs, of our agency, but more importantly, the families that were out there that are really, they're innocent victims of this. Also, I want to add too as well, we will be putting out additional information today by close of business from our director of criminal investigation and his detectives on this as we continue to unfold and download and talk to so many witnesses involved in this case. Talk to our deputy sheriffs that are involved in this case. Figure out who actually shot, who didn't shoot. We got a lot of work to do. So at the close of business, by the close of business today, our sheriff's office will put out some type of full media release to you to update you on all the information. Because again, we're in the very early stages of a massive multiple scene investigation. Again, uh, a lot of people saw this too as well. So we're gonna set up some type of bank or some type of informational network. Those kids, we wanna make sure those kids and parents are provided the proper resources of what they may have seen or not seen, or just a simple fact that firearm is being shot in their immediate vicinity. It just happened in this case, it was the good guys. So with that, staff, anything else before I open up for questions? It's all good. No sense. I'm gonna open up for a few questions and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but my team is physically working multiple locations. And again, and now, you know, with the, uh, the implementation of body-worn cameras in the St. Johns County Sheriff's Office over the last year, it's crucial that, of course, before we release any more facts, we look at the facts of the case. Any questions I can take? Sheriff, can you talk about the exchange of gunfire? The suspect, you said it was defensive action between two cars in the parking lot. Did he shoot at officers? Did officers return fire? And you're hearing that it sounded like a machine gun in the area. What was that exchange like? Sure, we simply know this fact, of course, that there were multiple rounds, of course, that were fired. We're trying to figure out, we got a lot of work to do as far as how many, if any, rounds that he fired. We know for a fact that he was armed with a firearm, which was a pistol. And we know that there, of course, there was multiple exchanges with the St. Johns County Sheriff's Office. You know, when you have a suspect taking a defensive posture like he did between two vehicles, um, that gives us two engine blocks, basically, what he gives us between him and them. So he was making that ultimate decision. Was he going to engage our innocent children and families? Was he going to engage himself or engage the St. Johns County Sheriff's Office? So again, we, we're trying to figure that out. It'll be with ballistics, of course. It'll be with shell casings, uh, of course. And it'll be body-worn camera footage, too, once we review that. And were there any other victims, you know, parents or children stuck by stray gunfire, hit by one of the vehicles during evasive maneuvers? You know, we talk about, you know, how much training we do in law enforcement. And this is one of those cases where all the training comes together, where our deputy sheriff's back, per se, were to the children and to the families, and they were engaging the target in the opposite direction. However... The suspect doesn't see that the same exact way. So as we continue to go through this case and see if there were any other shots fired, but we have no other victims um, or outstanding suspects that we know of except the deputy sheriff, the original deputy sheriff in the, in the, the original um, uh, that actually checked out with the suspect underneath the bridge. She does have some lacerations. Uh, we're trying to figure out where that came from, but she was bleeding somewhere on that scene uh, where they had some type of, of struggle ensued underneath the bridge. Identify the suspect at this time? At this time, we have not identified the suspect. Again, uh, um, he's in critical care, and we don't even have a, a new update of where he's at. So our detectives are in the hospital with him, um, and we will update you. Hopefully, we're hoping that something by this afternoon. Do you also know, or can you confirm, um, where that vehicle was found? Because I, I want to make sure, was that actually at the storage unit as well, or was that a different location away from the, the storage facility? So I'm going to turn over to one of my CID behind me, but the vehicle that was under the Palm Valley Bridge was the same vehicle that was actually pursued and the one that's actually now located in the retention pond. But as far as... That's accurate. It was, okay. We contacted away from Skip, the... Away from the... Okay. okay. Never mind. Yep. So you said they were uh, at a storage unit facility. Were they just breaking through multiple storage units? Was it just one particular unit they were after? Do we know? No. I would say that piece is still under active investigation. The burglary aspect of this and the leading up to the deputies involved shooting is still all under investigation those details will come out later do we, know the, do we know the identity of the person that is in custody right now who was uh, arrested at the storage facility do you know, uh, yes we do know uh, the identity and that individual is being brought into our criminal investigations division in downtown st augustine to be interviewed is that a woman or a minor in this case do we know who that person is at that part is still under active investigation 
and again, by the close of business today, we will, uh, they've already talked down and talked, but there's just so many going on, and our detectives are spread out all of St. John's County and, I believe, in, uh, in Clay County, too, at the hospital. So with that being said, we're just spread out, but we will have you an accurate, clear, concise, and factual, all the facts we can give you as of today. I think it's important we put that out there. Uh, but again, this is uh, one of those things where, you know, so many body cam so much body camera footage with an incident that went on, basically started at 5.52 this morning with the burglary in progress, basically. So here we are, you know, almost three hours later. Uh, working that same crime. So again, we appreciate you. Uh, most of you have my personal contact information. Uh, Corporal Greg Suchi is here. Um, he will handle any additional questions or information you have. Again, I'm just going to thank you again for your respectfulness of our agency in this community. Thank you.